What's up you guys, welcome to the video. My name is Armon, if you're new to this channel, I'm a Toronto-based deep and progressive house DJ and producer, and this YouTube channel is full of video lessons and tutorials aimed at beginner DJs to help them take their skills up to the next level. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about and look at some examples of a very important concept, which is how to maintain an energy level. What I mean by that is, during um, the more peak time of your mix in a live club set, when the dance floor is busy, you're playing faster music, maybe a bit more aggressive music, and you wanna make sure that that energy level is maintained and doesn't take any lulls that kind of kill the buzz and kill the energy on the dance floor. And in particular, I mean in between mixing songs. The way this usually happens, and I see this all the time, is the DJ waits a bit too long to mix out, start mixing out the last track. So the energy of that song, as that song starts to kind of conclude and wind up, is starting to, to die off. And it takes too long for the next track that they're bringing in to pick up the pace. So there's more to it though than just uh, starting to mix in earlier. There's other cues that you can use, and what we're gonna use here is either like bass lines, new melodies coming in, or even a vocal to really keep the mix uh, driving forward with more energy. So you have to know your music collection very well and try and plan and time for these events in the music to come at the right time. So let's go to the decks. I'm gonna give you a couple examples of mixing songs kind of too late where you can hear the energy start to go away. And then I'm going to do it the right way or what I would say is the best way to at least maintain the energy. And uh, you can see if you find and agree with me that the energy level does a lot more to kind of stay constant and even move things forward and not have any of those little lulls where people kind of stand around and stop shuffling their feet on the dance floor. All right, let's take a look. So what I'm gonna do now is just start to mix in the new track after the last breakdown of the outgoing track. And you'll hear that after that last breakdown, when its beat comes back, it kind of comes back with a bit less energy. And that female vocal is where the new track, the incoming track, kind of has its jumping off point where its energy gets going. Alright, so that mix was okay. It was pretty smooth. There's nothing wrong with it really. But what if we were to try it again and just get things to line up a little bit better? What if we try to have that female vocal jump in right when the last breakdown of the outgoing track ends and its beat comes back in? Then you'll have the beat there back in and at the same time the vocal to really kind of maintain that energy level. Let's let's give that a shot. Right now on the left deck, you can see I'm using a loop right before that vocal drops, so I know where that vocal comes in. So I'm using the loop function to keep it ready, and then at the right moment, release the loop right when I need that vocal to kick in. There you go, so the vocal landed at the right time, and you can kind of feel how that just drives the energy forward, and you don't really get any of that sense of a lull or a loss in energy as the new song starts building and coming in. It's kind of already there. Backwards, backwards. 
So I'll give you a second example now with two different songs. You can hear that this track here has got uh, a lot going on. It's a pretty high energy track. It's got a chunky beat. It's got a lot of drums. So let's see how it's going to sound if we wait uh, the kind of usual amount of time. It starts to uh, die off and we start to bring in the new track. Okay, so that heavy drop there with the really cool chunky synth, that's where the new song really gets going. So maybe we can place that a little bit earlier and line that up with um, some other breakdown ending in the outgoing track as well. Okay, so that one worked out all right, maybe not quite as good as the first example, but you can hear how there's more drums left from the outgoing song, and those drums are still there even after the heavy drop when the second, the new song really gets going, and it kind of helps layer up the sound and keep the energy there. Alright guys, so there you go, I hope that's helpful. A few examples of what we mean when we say keeping the energy level consistent and even pushing and advancing the mix forward in terms of its energy level. Uh, it's a bit of a tough kind of nebulous thing to know and to, I don't hear a lot of DJs talking about this. I haven't seen other tutorials on this topic. And it's something that I guess just kind of comes with experience. You've really got to know your music library well. But I think the best standard, kind of the best uh, sort of gold standard of whether your energy level is staying high enough or, or consistent enough across the mixes is just trying to put yourself in the mind of the dancer on the dance floor, right? Like, does that a uh, little lull in between mixes make you kind of get bored or is there enough of a beat and enough going on that you don't get bored and you continue wanting to dance and, and move around to it. That's what it's all about is keeping the audience and the crowd engaged, keeping them moving, keeping the dance floor bumping. 
All right, guys, I hope that's helpful. If you like this video, please subscribe and follow, and we'll see you back here for the next video.